Happy holidays, everyone, from all of us at the Cloud Foundation. 2016 was an eventful year for our wild horses. From a legal standpoint, it was a tremendous year of victories for our wild horses. Three victories in a row, which is unprecedented in my experience with the program. Our first was to stop the sterilization of wild mares in Oregon. And actually, it was only stopped when we filed a First Amendment lawsuit, which would have allowed us to be there to bear witness, to take pictures, and to record the events of those potentially dangerous surgeries. So we were really happy about that. The second was a victory in the checkerboard lawsuit in Wyoming. The Tenth Circuit Court of Appeals ruled that uh, BLM could not treat public lands like private lands. Uh, the BLM wanted to remove wild horses from public land and private land, treating the public land as if it was private land, so removals at the request of the Rock Springs Grazing Association. That too, the Tenth Circuit said, no, BLM, you cannot treat our public land as private land, so victory. And then the third victory, uh, we were interveners on behalf of BLM against the state of Wyoming. The state of Wyoming wanted to tell the BLM any time they were over the appropriate management level, which we think is frequently an inappropriate management level, but anyway, the state of Wyoming wanted to dictate to the BLM, if you're over that AML, it's called, appropriate management level, then horses have to be removed. The courts ruled again that it was BLM's decision whether to remove horses from our public land. So again, a tremendous victory. Um, and what's the purpose of that? I learned about the first victory when I was attending my Does second advisory board meeting. Do you think where you could chip from as a member? And then you could tell know from where the animal is when you're some distance away? I'd been attending these meetings for several decades, I think two decades, and knocked me over with a feather when they appointed me as the humane advocate on this board. And I'm very pleased to serve with my fellow board members, even though uh, we certainly don't agree on everything. When they voted to destroy the horses in holding, I was the sole no vote. Ginger? Absolutely not. No. Uh, we don't kill healthy wild animals. So I, I continue to serve on this board, and I hope I can uh, contribute and always speak for our wild horses and burros and what's best for them and what's best for the lands on which they live. In June, um, Congressman Grijalva of uh, Arizona asked me to testify before the House Subcommittee on Natural Resources. The, uh, subcommittee on Federal Lands. Of and I was, of course, Natural very proud to do this. Um, at the Cloud Foundation it turned everything upside down. We put all our energies into preparing a, a concise but a thorough document about how we see uh, wild horses and burros on their public lands and how we feel they wild should be horses and burros managed. A fairly allocated piece of that land. The Alaska subcommittee the that day consisted of only our conservative Western representatives on the committee because the, the Democrats were down on the House floor trying to push for uh, gun legislation. So they weren't there, and it was I'm only sure the conservative Christian. folks that were there. And one uh, particularly fright, frightening individual from Wyoming purred that wouldn't euthanasia be a lovely way to die? In a humane and lovely way. This Some is a serious animals. time for wild horses and burros on the range and in holding. Those holding horses are very vulnerable. We have to keep wild horses out of holding, and we have to encourage and assist BLM to manage them on the range. What I mean by that is the goal is to have mortality, natural mortality and reproduction equal over time. So we don't have growing populations, uh, and we don't have to have removals because we have a baseline that's fairly static over time. How do we do this? I believe we do it with safe vaccines. Uh, I personally believe that the Dartable PZP vaccine is a, is a great one. It's worked well in the prior mountains. This year, for the first time in a long time, mortality and reproduction are fairly equal, and that's the ideal. Then no horses have to be removed, or only a small number 
have to be removed. And if they have to be re removed, then bait trapping is the benign way to do this. And it's really good, particularly if you're only trying to remove small numbers at a time. And be very selective. In the priors, of course, you have to be very selective, as you do in, in some of these small herds where genetic variability is, is a real concern. Another way to help protect wild horses in holding is to adopt them. And that's what I've done maybe too many times. Um, but they make such great partners. And um, they're so smart. And they have such strong bodies. They have feet like iron. They love trail riding, which is what I, I do a lot of. And I used to do quite a bit of endurance riding. And I just think they're fantastic. But consider adopting a Mustang. They're great partners for you. They've been great partners for me. For those who are lucky enough to be free, like Cloud, then that's the ideal and that's the, the, whole, the whole goal of on the range management. 2016 was a year of um, searching. Searching for Cloud from, from early in the winter um, until now. And we have not been able to find him and I think we must assume that he has decided to die. I say decided to die because he looked great. I don't think there was anything necessarily physically wrong with him. He has gone through some tremendous battles uh, with several stallions and, and been injured, but he looked well going into winter, uh, but um, then he disappeared. However, there were two remarkable and inexplicable sightings of Cloud uh, Ann Evans and, and Kristen Collette and I were on Tillett Ridge and we saw him walk into a grove of trees. And my exact words were, thank God. And we drove immediately down there in the UTV and we not only didn't find Cloud, we found no horses. Then the second sighting, I have a little picture that I took, or blew it up, telephoto picture. Linda Hannock was standing right here next to me and we looked across the teacup bowl and we could see him between two trees. Linda and I drove across, got out of the UTV, started hiking, and there were other bands there, but there were no Palominos, including Cloud. And so that's kind of a, an inexplicable thing, and you can maybe interpret it as you will. But in any case, I think that he is not with us physically. But um, he certainly is present. Uh, um, Ann and I were looking at the horse list yesterday, and we went through and we checked off every relative of Cloud. And I don't know whether you can guess how many relatives he has on the Prior Mountains. 49. Some of them are second cousins, but some of them are sons and daughters, grandsons and granddaughters. And so he lives on as long as there's a herd in the Prior Mountains, Cloud will live on. Happy New Year. Thanks for helping us. I hope you will continue to do so. You may think that you don't make a difference, but you do. And so help us to help the wild horses. Thanks so much. <laughs>